I got involved in working on engaging men in large part because I always felt like I didn't belong with men, that I always felt like I was different, I was other. That's what brought me into this work of engaging men and really talking about helping men to create healthy environments. And while I was doing that, I also discovered poker. Those two things feel about as far apart from each other, I think, as they can, because poker is in so many ways really the stereotype of manhood. And I just, I felt at home at the poker table for some reason. It was very strange. Then one day I went to Vegas. Uh, my whole wardrobe was basically Take Back the Night t-shirts. So I was wearing a shirt that said, just in big block letters, stop violence against women. After we'd been there for probably three hours, someone pointed out my shirt and said, so tell me about what you're wearing. I said, well, you know, this is what I do. I'm trying not to get too heavy in the poke, at the poker table. And so the guy says, well, you know, that's really interesting because um, my wife was married to someone else before me and uh, and that person abused her. And it's still, we've been married for 25 years and it still affects my relationship. She still gets scared sometimes because of what this other guy did to her. And the guy next to him says, well, that's really interesting because what I'm going through right now is that my daughter is 20 years old and she's just this week going back to college after leaving during her first semester because she was sexually assaulted. And literally everyone at the table shared a story about an experience they had of someone they cared about being sexually assaulted or uh, surviving domestic violence. And we got to one person who just started openly sobbing at the table. And in hypermasculine spaces, someone sobbing is generally not welcome. And the game just stopped. People just kind of sat there and let him regather himself. And then we just went on with the game. And I realized in that moment that something had happened because I was in this space that felt safe, that felt comfortable, it felt familiar for people. People felt an opportunity and a freedom to be vulnerable in a way that they normally wouldn't be and normally aren't allowed to be as people raise male in this country. And so I thought, wow, I think I might be onto something here. And so I started when I played poker, wearing those shirts intentionally and starting conversations and making sure to say things. And I have just begun thinking about what are the principles that I'm bringing to the table. One of them is create a context in which people feel safe to be vulnerable. Another one uh, would be, you know, consistently modeling respect and empathy, modeling awkward or vulnerability or fun or silly or playful really makes a difference. And I think that people desperately want play in our lives and are just looking for permission. So this is not structured in the way that curricula is, right? It's not anything like that. I've had many different experiences at the poker table, like the one I described. And in many ways, I think it might be the most powerful experience I've had uh, in my decades now of doing violence prevention, is having conversations at the poker table and encouraging other people to have those conversations.